Well, hey there, I'm Emma from Mmm English. And in this lesson, I'm going to share 10 words that you can start using right now to sound more natural when you speak English. So which are these 10 magic words that I'm talking about? These ones. Interestingly, these words have a few things in common. So firstly, they are very, very, very common. In fact, these are some of the most common English words. They're all in the top 20 words that are used in English. So for that reason alone, this lesson is worth paying attention to. But before we go on, I want to make sure that you've subscribed to mm English and you've turned on the notifications so that you know whenever there's a new lesson ready for you. So just hit that red button down there. <laughs> but keep watching to learn how to say these words naturally. And at the end of this lesson, you'll get to practice with me. So most of these words are used for grammatical reasons in English sentences. On their own, they don't hold a lot of meaning. They're not nouns or verbs or adjectives, which are the words that help us to understand what is happening in a sentence or how it's happening in a sentence. So these words are structure words, not content words. The exception though is the be verb here. It's the only verb that we've got, but it's the exception. The other thing that these words have in common is that they all have stressed and unstressed forms when they're spoken. And this is exactly what we're going to go over in this lesson. Because using the unstressed forms of these words when you speak English will help you to sound more natural. So let's start with the. So this word is not usually stressed, so you don't hear it pronounced like the very often. You'll hear a shorter version, the, and also you'll hear the. So we have two unstressed forms because the pronunciation of this word changes depending on the word that follows it. So if the word the is followed by a consonant sound, then it's pronounced the, the lazy schwa sound, uh. Can I use the bathroom? The, the, the bathroom. Can I use the bathroom? Tell the children to stay inside. The children, the children. Tell the children to stay inside. Now, if the word the is followed by a vowel sound, then it's pronounced the, which is much like the, but just a shorter version of it. The, the. I'll take you to the airport. The, the airport. I'll take you to the airport. She forgot to buy the ice cream. The ice cream. The, the ice cream. She forgot to buy the ice cream. The verb be is the second most commonly used word in English, but of course it has several forms, doesn't it? Depending on the subject and the tense. So you won't often hear be stressed in an English sentence. When it's the main verb in the infinitive form, you'll usually hear just a slightly shorter version. I'll be home soon. Be. Be home. I'll be home soon. Now in the present tenses, you'll hear am, is and are. And these forms are usually pushed together when spoken naturally with the subject. So it forms a contraction. I am becomes I'm. You are your. He, she, it is. He's, she's, it's. We are becomes where and they are becomes there. So when spoken, these contractions mean that we hardly hear the be verb at all. The pronunciation of the past tense forms are also usually reduced. So was becomes was. He was upstairs earlier. Was. He was. 
he was upstairs earlier. And were becomes were. They were too tired. Were. They were. They were too tired. Now, in past participle form, the vowel sound is often shortened to bin. Instead of been, it's bin. We've been there too. Bin. Been there. We've been there too. Moving on to the word to. Now, to is the stressed form. But when spoken, this word is usually unstressed. T. Just like I said, moving on to the word to. To the word. To. To the word. Moving on to the word to. It's quarter to two. T. To two. It's quarter to two. Now, of is another incredibly common English word, usually unstressed, so it sounds like of, not of. Of, with the lazy schwa sound again. Would you like a cup of tea? Of tea? Of. Of. Cup of tea? Would you like a cup of tea? I'll take a picture of you. Of you. Of. Of. Picture of you. I'll take a picture of you. Now, of course, and must make our list of commonly used words, right? And just like the previous words, it's often unstressed when spoken. And becomes und or n. You and me. Come and visit me. And visit me. Come and visit me. We need some milk and apples. And apples. We need some milk and apples. Now this tiny little word at can be stressed or unstressed. You need to be here at three o'clock. At. So by stressing at, I'm adding emphasis. I'm making the meaning stronger. You need to be here exactly at three o'clock. Not before, not after, at three. So most of the time though, this word won't be stressed and the sound reduces to uh. I'll meet you at the car. At, at, at the car. I'll meet you at the car. Pick her up at eight. At eight. At eight. Pick her up at eight. Just like at, that can be stressed or unstressed. So this word can be used as a determiner to explain which specific thing we're talking about. So in this situation, you'll probably need to stress this word so that it's really clear. Not this one, that one. And as an adverb, it will probably also be stressed. I'm not that hungry. But when that is used as a conjunction, so when it's connecting two clauses in a sentence, it's unstressed and the vowel sound reduces. It becomes the. I told her that I'd be here. The. That I'd. That I'd be here. I told her that I'd be here. So let's talk about the articles a and an because they are both usually unstressed. Now they're used with singular nouns, aren't they? When you're talking about just one of something. So since we stress English words to make the meaning really clear, it's much more natural to stress the number rather than stress the article because the important information is that there is just one of something. So it sounds a bit odd to hear, no, I said I only wanted a sandwich. It's much more natural to hear, no, I said I only wanted one sandwich. So since most of the time these articles are unstressed, the vowel sound reduces to become the schwa sound. I'm only staying for a day. 
a, a day. I'm only staying for a day. Can you pass me an apple? An, an apple? Can you pass me an apple? Now, very often, the word it is reduced to. So instead of it, i, i, the vowel sound relaxes and it becomes the schwa sound, uh, uh. And when spoken quickly, the T is often not fully pronounced either. The air is not released after the sound. So instead of t, t, the air is caught and then you move quickly to the next sound. So listen up. It doesn't matter. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. I must have lost it. Lost it. I must have lost it. Now, notice how the word it is pulled into the word before it because it ends with a consonant. Lost it. Lost it. Get it out of the car. It, it. Get it out. Get it out of the car. And as. <laughs> this little word can be a conjunction, so it can connect two parts of a sentence together. It can be a preposition, even an adverb. So it can be stressed as. He wasn't as late as I thought. But it's often unstressed, as. Again, using the schwa for the unstressed sound. He works as a doctor, as, as, as a doctor. He works as a doctor. It wasn't as big as I thought, as, as big as. It wasn't as big as I thought. Last but not least, another small but mighty English word, for. Now, when I pronounce this word, I don't pronounce the final er sound. And that's my Australian accent, which is the same as the British pronunciation of this word, for, for. So the standard American accent pronounces the R at the end, for. That's my really rubbish American accent, for. But whether or not you pronounce the R sound, there is a different vowel sound when this word is stressed, for, and unstressed, f. And this word is usually unstressed. Just like all of the other examples that have come before, the vowel sound reduces down to become the schwa sound. He needs it for work, f, for work. He needs it for work. Can you get it for me? For me? Can you get it for me? So you've probably noticed that the schwa sound is a very, very important sound for unstressed words, right? And that's because this is the most common sound in English. So as you're using all of these small but grammatically important words in your English sentences, then start reducing the sounds of them. This is going to help you to sound more natural when you speak English. Words that are important to help someone understand your sentence should be stressed. And these words are usually adjectives, verbs, nouns, that kind of thing. But other words in your sentence can be unstressed and the sound reduces and they become difficult to hear. Okay, so before we finish, I want to practice with you a little. I'm going to put a sentence up here. So when you see it, say it out loud and try to reduce the unstressed words. I'll be there on the first, on the first, I'll be there on the first. A bottle of water, of water, a bottle of water. 
It's for my friend. For my. It's for my friend. It's a piece of cake. A piece of. It's a piece of cake. Well, that's it for this lesson. You know that I make new lessons every week, don't you? So make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you don't miss any of my future lessons. You just need to click that little red button down there. <laughs> and if you want to keep practicing with me right now, then check out these lessons right here. In fact, that one is great for improving your pronunciation and your natural English expression. So try that one out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.